The Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure. Suspense. Mystery. And music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with the song and the story are Roy and Dale. Far away places with strange-sounding names. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. Our song tonight is about faraway places, and so is our story. It's a very unusual story and one that we really can't explain. But we thought you might enjoy hearing it and then maybe draw your own conclusions and arrive at your own explanation for the mysterious series of events that took place when we visited Paul and Julia Sanders a few months ago. We'd been down to El Paso on a personal appearance engagement, and Paul was a scientist at the Atomic Research Center about 30 miles outside of town. Paul and Julia had been friends of ours for many years, so, of course, when they invited us to spend a few days with them, we accepted. They lived in a rented house in El Paso because Julia wasn't allowed inside the atomic center. The night we arrived, she told us that Paul had spent the previous night and all that day at the center, but that she expected him home shortly. It's so good to have you here. Paul ought to be along any minute. It's good to be here, Julia. We've sure been looking forward to it. Well, I'll say. <laughs> What's that I smell cooking? Well, that's probably Paul now. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Sanders? Yes. I'm Forbes from the Bureau in Washington. Here's my identification. Oh. Well, yes, please come in. Thank you. Is uh, your husband here, Mrs. Sanders? No, but I expect him shortly, yes. Is there anything I can do? When did you see him last, Mrs. Sanders? Well, yesterday morning when he went to work. He didn't come home last night. He phoned and said he'd have to spend the night at the center. He does that sometimes. Yes, I know. You're sure that you haven't seen or heard from him in the past few hours? What is it, Mr. Ford? Did something happened to Paul? We don't know, Mrs. Sanders. We really don't know much of anything. Except that your husband seems to have disappeared. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Mr. Rogers, Miss Evans, Mr. Brady. How are you here? Mr. Rogers, this might be a very fortunate coincidence, your being here. Perhaps you can help. Well, we'll be glad to do anything we can, Mr. Forbes. When did you first discover that Paul was gone? About 7 o'clock this morning. It's almost supper time. Why haven't you let me know before this? We've been searching the grounds and buildings of the center. It's a large place, you know. We, we wanted to be sure, absolutely sure, that he was missing. Julia, did Paul drive his car to the center yesterday? Yes. Well, that might be a lead, Mr. Forbes. Try looking for the car. We know where the car is, Miss Evans. Where? In the parking lot inside the center. Oh. Well, then Paul didn't leave the center in the car. Miss Evans, getting in and out of an atomic research center is as hard as getting into the White House without a pass. There are three checkpoints that everyone must pass through. Paul Sanders checked in at 8.30 a.m. yesterday morning. He was not checked out. Well, gee whiz. Gosh, oh, hemlock. That makes it pretty simple. He must still be there. Yeah, but he isn't. But, Mr. Forbes, isn't it possible that he could have left some other way besides going through the checkpoints, I mean? Well, I don't see how. The entire area is surrounded by a fence over 15 feet high and patrolled by armed guards. The fence is charged with electricity. Anyone who touches it would be instantly killed. Mm. Now, frankly, we're up against a blank wall. Paul isn't inside the center, but we can't understand how he could have gotten out. Mr. Rogers, uh... Would you care to come over to the center and have a look around? Maybe a fresh mind on this. Uh, well, perhaps you'll notice something that I've overlooked. Sure, Mr. Forbes. I'll be glad to. Good. I'll leave a pass for you at the outer gate. Suppose you meet me in my office tomorrow morning. <laughs> Mr. 
May I see your pad, sir? Sure. All right, Mr. Rogers. You may enter the radiation detection area. If your clothing or anything on or about your person is radioactive, an alarm will sound. Walk straight ahead, sir. After you pass through the detection lock, you'll see Mr. Forbes' office on your left. Thank you. Tagman here. You are uh, Rogers, yeah? Yes. I am Professor Braun. Mr. Forbes told me you are coming here, Rogers. I am to be your escort. Oh, well, thank you. Good morning, Roy. Professor? Uh, good morning, Mr. Forbes. Sit down. I've asked Professor Braun to take you around the center, Roy. Show you the room he shared with Paul. Sanders' personal belongings are still there. Personal belongings? But I understood that Paul only stayed here overnight occasionally. Uh, that's right. Well, what do you mean by his personal belongings? When Paul Sanders disappeared here, Rogers, he was wearing his pajamas, his bathrobe, and his slippers. The rest of his things are still in the room. <laughs> can see the room is padlocked. This was done by security as soon as I discovered that Paul was gone. And uh, when was that, Professor? Uh, yesterday morning, about seven o'clock. When I awoke, he was gone. You mean to say that you were in the room all night with him and that he left without disturbing you? <laughs> Since I am now an American citizen, Herr Rogers, I sleep very soundly. Yeah, yeah, it is true. Paul simply put on his bathrobe and his slippers and walked out. He made no noise, at least not enough noise to awaken me. Uh, this is the closet. You see his suit, top coat, shoes, socks, underwear. And here on the dresser, his billfold, wristwatch, car keys, and identification pad. Yeah, I see, but, uh, hey, what's this piece of rock on the desk? Mm, must have belonged to Paul. Perhaps a uh, paperweight? Hmm. Funny-looking thing, isn't it? Oh, uh... Hey. It's sure heavier than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it seems to be very dense. Perhaps one of Paul's experiments. I see. Well, I think that about covers everything in here. Now, I will show you the outer area and the security with which we... Professor? Yeah? Have, uh... Have you got any theory about Paul's disappearance? Yeah, Herr Rogers. I have a theory. What? <laughs> no one would believe me. It, uh, it is too fantastic. Try me. Well, you have been told that there's no way for a man to leave this center without passing through the checkpoints. But this is not strictly true. Theoretically, there, there is a way. One way. Really? How? By going up, Herr Rogers. Straight up. Hello? Miss Evans? Yes? One moment, please. Here you are, Roy. She's on the phone. Thank you. Hello, Dale. Roy, have you found out anything? No, not really, Dale. I, I'm just on my way out of the center... I'll be there in about a half an hour. How's Julia? Oh, she's very upset, Roy. Didn't you learn anything? No, I'm afraid not, Dale. Is Julia there? No. She went for a walk over to Davis Park. Why? Nothing. I, uh, I'll tell you when I get there. All right, Roy. See you later. Bye. Julia went for a walk over to Davis Park. Let's see. Roy, I think I'd better have her watched. Why don't you let me talk to her first? Well... Okay, but I'm sure you realize how serious this is from many angles. Paul was working on a top-secret project. He must have found a way to leave the center without being seen, and he must have had a reason not to take his clothes and personal effects with him. You've got to find out how he left and why. 
I'm sure he'll contact his wife sooner or later. He's very much in love with her. Yes, I know. I'll question her. Good. Hey, I hate to think this of Paul Sanders. He, he was cleared by security right down the line. But, well, there's always a chance that... It, well, it's a terrible thing to say, but... You mean there's a chance that he turned traitor, went over to the other side? It's a possibility. There's another possibility, too. What's that? It's possible that Paul Sanders is dead. Okay, Roy, here's the detection lock straight ahead. You can find your way from here. Sure, thanks. I'll call you in the morning after I've talked to Julia. Good. So long. Bye. Roger, sir. He's been contaminated by radiation. Oh, don't be alarmed, Roy. Rush him to the decontamination room at once. Yes, sir. Don't worry, Mr. Rogers. We'll have you fixed up in a jiffy. Well, I can't understand it. What, sir? Well, how could I be radioactive? I didn't touch anything. Well, sir, sometimes... Wait a minute. I did touch something. What was that, sir? A small paperweight. A small, heavy paperweight. <laughs> you're back. What's the matter? Oh, it's Julia, Roy. She ain't showed up yet. Roy, I'm worried. She was so upset when she left. Hmm. Well, maybe we'd better drive over to the park and have a look around. Hi, everybody. Oh, Julia. Julia. Where have you been? We were so worried. I'm sorry if I worried you. The night was so beautiful and clear, I I just couldn't stop walking. Julia, you shouldn't be wandering around by yourself. Frankly, Mr. Forbes is very suspicious. Suspicious? Yes, he's even thinking about having you watch. Oh, well, why? Well, there's something very mysterious about Paul's disappearance. The way he disappeared and why. Forbes thinks that Paul may contact you. I see. Well, he's right. What do you How's mean? That? I... I didn't tell you the whole truth. I, I haven't just been walking. Did you see Paul tonight? No. No, I didn't see Paul, but I... I saw a friend of his. He told me that Paul is safe and well, and and as soon as possible, I'll be able to join him. Join him? Where? Up there. Up there. On one of those planets. You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe any of it. All right, Julia. Now, take it easy and, and tell us about it again. You say a spaceship landed in the park, and this this man came up to you? Yes. At least, well, I, I guess he was a man. He... He was wearing a heavy suit that covered him from head to foot, but he must have been a man because I, I understood what he said. Well, what did he sound like, dear? Sound like? Well, now that I think of it, I, I don't believe he spoke at all. Not really spoke, but I, I, I could hear him. Julia, you're upset. This disappearance of Paul... I'm not crazy. I'm not upset and I'm not losing my mind. I didn't imagine it. I didn't. All right, dear. Paul is safe and well, and I'm going to join him. He said so. Did he say when you could join Paul? No. Just for me to be ready at at any time. Well, I I suppose it's possible, but... Possible? Oh, of course it's possible. I'm surprised at you. Who are you calling, Roy? Mr. Forbes. I think I should tell him something. Oh, you're wasting your breath, Roy. He'll never believe my story. Hello? Mr. Forbes? This is Roy Rogers. Oh, no. No, I'm fine. The decontamination boys took care of everything. No, she's back now. Yes? Yes, I've talked to her. Well, the first thing I think you should do is to have that paperweight analyzed. The paperweight on Paul's desk in his room. Yes, I do. I think you might find it very interesting. Another planet, huh? 
Well, that's quite the story. I think we'd better have Mrs. Sanders put under observation at once. <laughs> she said you wouldn't believe her. Roy, I'm a practical man. I have to be. It'd be so easy to accept this fantastic explanation and let it go at that, but... Ah, good and talk here, Rogers. Step four. Come in, Professor. Roy has just told me a fantastic story. Oh, really? Mrs. Sanders claims to have seen a spaceship and a man from space. She says that Paul Sanders is on another planet, and she's going to join him. I see. And do you believe this story, Herr Rogers? Well, I don't completely doubt it. I, I think it's possible. Ah, so? Good. You're a very smart man, Herr Rogers. Oh, now, Professor, don't tell me you believe it. I have had this theory for some time now, Herr Ford. But why is the whole idea so impossible for you to accept? Our government is spending millions of dollars a year investigating, photographing, and pursuing or trying to what they have chosen to call UFOs, unidentified flying objects. During the past years, many persons have mysteriously disappeared from the face of Earth, never to be seen again. And you actually believe that these people were taken to another planet? Some of them, perhaps. As I said before, it is not impossible. All right. You stick to your theory and I'll stick to mine. The first thing I'm going to do is put a 24-hour watch on Julia Sanders. I have another suggestion, Herr Forbes, before you waste your time. Yes? Why don't you give Mrs. Sanders a lie detector test? Julia, dear, you understand that you do not have to submit to this test unless you want to. Yes, I understand. And from what I've been told, the results may or may not be satisfactory. We're all ready if you are. All right, Doctor. We'll wait right here, Junior. Now, try to keep calm, will you? Don't you worry, Dela. I'm not afraid. Not in the least. Just lie down there, Mrs. Sanders. Now, these wires will not burn or cause any sensation at all. There, there now. Are you comfortable? Yes, sir. Quite comfortable, thank you. Very well, then. Now, your name is Julia Sanders? Yes. You live in El Paso? Yes. You recently were contacted by a man in a machine from outer space. Yes. How much longer will it be, Roy? I don't know, Dale. The doctor said the test would take about an hour. Well, she's been in there over an hour now. Well, will, will the doctor know the results right away? As I understand it, he'll have a pretty good idea if Julia is not telling the truth. If she is, he'll probably have to study the charts more carefully. There's the doctor, Roy. Oh. Uh, is the test over, doctor? Yes, Mr. Rogers, it is. Do you know yet whether she was telling the truth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Miss Evans, I do. Mrs. Sanders was not telling the truth. Roy, have you seen Julia this morning? No, she, she's probably sleeping late. Maybe you'd better answer it, Roy. Julia probably needs her sleep. Okay. Hello? Mr. Rogers? Yes. Uh, this is Dr. Cummings, Mr. Rogers. I I thought I'd better tell you immediately. Yes? What is it, Doctor? Well, it's very embarrassing, but... Well, the test I gave Mrs. Sanders yesterday... Yes? It, uh, it wasn't at all conclusive. I discovered an error in the machine this morning. I think she deserves to be given another test. I see. Well, Doctor, I'll have to ask Mrs. Sanders if she wishes to do it again. We'll let you know. Well, thank you, Mr. Rogers, and I am very sorry. Roy, come here. Roy. What is it, Dale? Roy, look, this note. It was on Julia's dresser. I went in to see if she was all right and... Dear Roy and Dale, 
thank you so much for being on my side. I'll never forget you. You won't ever see me again as I received word that I am to join Paul tonight. Love, Julia. Hey, Roy. Look here what it says in the morning paper. Giant flying saucer seen hovering over Davis Park. Visitor from space. Described in detail by an observer. Hmm. Well, well, what's the matter? What are you all looking at me like that for? Hello? Roy, this is Forbes. Uh, hello. I was just going to call you. Oh? It's Julia. She's gone and, and she left a note. What did she say? She said she was joining Paul. She said that the man from space would come for her last night. Pat just read an article in the paper that... Yes, I know. And I've got something to tell you. Yes? I took your advice and had that piece of radioactive rock analyzed. The one that Paul used for a paperweight? The thing you were contaminated with? Yes. I just got the report. I see. Well, what's it made out of? I'll read you the findings. This substance is composed of no ore, metal, or combination of ores or metals known to exist on the face of the earth. Well, folks, that's our story for tonight. A strange story that really can't be explained. A story about places much farther away than in our song. Far away places with strange sounding names. Far away over the sea. Oh, shit.